Mute navigation. Voice guidance is switched off. There you go. Yeah, a successful football club is a, is a hub of the community and the work that we can do is, is second to none. And, you know, people like to be associated with something that's successful in their town. Unfortunately, with COVID and all the problems we've had, that's kind of had to be put on the back burner for a couple of years. We're just starting to build that again now. And you know, we want the football club to be really important to the town again. And we want to reach out more to the community because it's important. There aren't too many success stories in Dover. Um, we want to try and give the, the town some, um, some good feelings. The reason we got into our position was because we were originally promised that if we started the season, we would get grants. And then after that, if there were no crowds allowed in stadia, we would then get more grants. When it got to December, the grants disappeared and they were then huge loans that you had to take as a club. I took this club over in 2005. It was hugely in debt in CVA. I said then I will never get this club in debt again. So I refused to take out the loan. We put the players on furlough. We couldn't complete our fixtures. So we were fined 40,000 pounds and deducted 12 points. I've had some criticism from other clubs but mainly our supporters have been very, very supportive. I go to away games and supporters I've never seen before come up to me and say, we support what you did, we think you did the right thing. And I think the truth is that probably four or five other chairmen would have liked to have done what I did, but didn't have the courage to do it and sort of left me on my own. But had they had the courage to do it, I think that the whole thing would have been a lot more sensible. A lot of history in Dover from the Napoleonic upwards. There's uh, an awful lot of infrastructure left over from yeah, we went to Wrexham and um, they beat us 6-5 uh, after um, after 97 minutes, uh, when the referee played a lot of extra time, uh, basically until they scored. Corner goes in, plus for score, and Rexham have scored! They were really pleased with their victory. Um, I did point out to them that two strikers individually each were being paid more than our entire playing budget for the, for the week, which rather puts into perspective where we are as a club and where the league is in terms of the disparity amongst clubs. Every, every year there's two clubs with a million and a half pounds parachute payment making the situation worse and somebody's got to wake up to it, you know, and, and all they do is just keep throwing more and more money at it until they, they get themselves to the top of the table. Anyone like Ryan Reynolds made an offer to buy Dover Athletic? No, nobody's, uh, nobody's made an offer to buy Dover Athletic. It's a very unfashionable club, it's a poor town. I try and keep the club running for the town, but it's not attractive to somebody from overseas, I don't believe. I've never known anything like it in football. It's been difficult. It's been difficult to deal with in terms of the situation we've we're in and, and been in. What we have done, we've all mucked in, you know. We've got a kit man that does absolutely everything, you know. He, he not just a kit, he does the media side of it. Everybody mucks in and, and I muck in with a kit. You know, I've, you know, I've done that this season, which I've never done before. But I think, again, that goes back to my roots, really. That goes back to where you've come from. I bet Pep doesn't have to drive the kit man and bring the kit to the ground, does he? being non-league and being in around non-league clubs and see how they've 
the, the community and uh, everybody pulls together. The tea ladies and everybody on the turnstile. Everyone's been doing that this year. And why not? Why wouldn't the manager do that? But I'm, I'm back to where I started. So why wouldn't I do that? Why wouldn't I help out? That's me. That's, that's why, I, why I love the game. I did resign just before Christmas. I had a conversation with the chairman. He sat me down and said, look, whoever I bring in, it's still going to be in the same position. It's, nothing will change. You know, I'm not going to all of a sudden produce loads of money where you can go and get loads of players. This is what we've got. So, you know, why would you do that? Look, you know, dig in, keep going and, and keep working. We've lost a few clubs over the last few years, haven't we? The likes of Berry going out of business. That, you know, that was a sad day. You know, that, again, a very sad day for all those Berry fans. We could be a Berry. We could have been a Berry. And I think it'd be nice if the was more money filtered down from the top level down to the lower level because everyone mentions the football family. Well, we're in that family. We we're at that bottom part of the family, you know, and, and I'd just like to see a little bit more help from the top levels for, for some of these smaller clubs. This is Hassenthaler. Suddenly a bit of space for Andy Hassenthaler. Oh, what a goal! He almost tore the net off. My management style is pretty much like I played, you know, full on, passionate. Kick every ball on the sideline. No, stay there! Oh, not get up in a box, you don't. You can't just get up in there. You can't rely on fucking referees! They're fucking running! To go on Ireland! They're a fucking disgrace! You've done great all afternoon. You don't deserve to lose a game again. It's, it's like it's a broken record. You give everything. Just drives me insane. We were actually comfortable. But I, I, I listen, like I said, I'm I'm gutted, absolutely gutted for you and you can't know what to say, but well done, keep your heads up. Well done, son. Good day to you. How a referee can give a free kick to them when it was a foul on our player and then send our player off for two yellows is unbelievable. And their goals and, me, and the foul. Knock on the door and say, can, can I see you in, what time can I see you? You get 30 minutes. Yeah. That's how you want to see him. Yeah. Like, shocking. Absolutely shocking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Never in my mind, I never even thought about not being a footballer. Scored my first goal against Wrexham in front of their fans. That was incredible. It was unbelievable. There was about eight and a half hours in there. Oh my god! Oh my fucking god! Oh my fucking god! Oh my fucking god! Oh my fucking god! Playing in front of that was great. I actually, I actually love this so much. It was actually the first game where I actually got teary after a game because I thought, realistically, we're playing for nothing because we've been relegated. We haven't scored lots of goals this season, and then we went five two up. It will say, all oh, seventeen year old scored, and I just thought, it, it, in in the moment, I was thinking, wow, this really could start big things. Just sitting there in my room playing games, and I saw Gaffer's calling me. I was like, freaking out. I thought, hello, Gaffer. He was just like. Just she said straight up that I'll be starting and I was just like shaking. I called my dad, my dad was crying. Just a massive deal because I don't know, it's just the first step. It was like, if once you've made your debut, that's tick, like, it's ticked off. That's a milestone that you've done. I'm most positive that I'll become a footballer. I think I can get to the top. Yeah. I think I can get to Premier League. Obviously, maybe Ballon d'Or, maybe I've pushed it a bit too far, <laughs> all that stuff. Maybe I've come to realisation that I'm not a Lionel Messi, but I think I can definitely um, make a name for myself. The ears are still there, George. <laughs> I know, <laughs> they're yeah, your, uh, never yeah. Wear. They're your trademark. All the girls, yeah. the girls all go, he says, oh, what mirrors pin back? And the girls will go, don't we love your ears? That is completely off track, but I used to be addicted to doing keepy-ups. Oh. Like, addicted. George and I always used to go on holiday everywhere together. The only thing we needed to take for George was a football. And we get up in the morning, out would come the ball. My record I got when I was like 13, it's like 1,137 or something like that. Yeah, he that was, was obsessed, right? so you must have only been about seven. I was quite happy, I'd sit there with a nice glass of wine. George would be there with all the stall holders and they'd suddenly have him having a game of football. 
and that was your holiday, wasn't it? Yeah, I just used to, yeah, from a young age, like we said before, I've just always loved playing football. Yeah, George is, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say what I think about George. He's got some great promise. He's been signed up to a big agency in London against advice because we think he's too young for that and he's not developed his game enough yet. He's now under contract to us. Um, I just hope all the hype and attention doesn't affect his game because I've seen it many times where agents and sometimes over-enthusiastic parents get hold of players, young boys, and, and, and push them too hard too soon, and they end up failing. Whereas if they were allowed to develop their game naturally, a club like Dover or other clubs, they will get on much better in a year, 18 months' time when they've developed the game. We wouldn't have a football club if he hadn't have done what he had done. The way football is and the way the world's been over the last couple of years, the decision they made, again, up for me, is it's, it's very harsh. It's cost us our status in this league, definitely cost our status in this league. The positives out of it that we can, I'm sitting here today and we'll have a Dover Football Club next season. You just don't care about it, Bounce. Oh, okay, here we go. Big boys in the pot. Listen, mate, nothing changed. Screens don't mean nothing to me. Shit goals away, long throws like we did on Monday. Don't want to be chasing our asses here, because it could, could be a long day. That's why it's important we pass the ball, and you try and get them pockets in there. Come on, let's get going. Come on, let's get going. Come Fucking fame. We've got it sorted. We've got it sorted. And we're in the game. We will get more opportunities. Fucking slow down. The longer it goes on, they'll get frustrated. They'll, get, they'll be able to go to fucking managers room near crowd, because that's what they're like. But you're right in it. Away from home. How many shots you have to say? One. One over the bar. One over the bar, which fuck me is bread and butter. And that's our game. With your legs, you're doing fucking well in there. But we've got to believe in ourselves. I wish we believed in ourselves a bit more. So keep going. Keep believing. Stay in the game boys. Again. But well done. So we've got another 45 minutes. Yeah, come in, boys. Just be like, oh no, I'll be fine. Stay down. Come on, boys. Come on. 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 Now, how many more times can I do it? Jesus Christ. Why do they do it themselves? Why do, you, why do they do it? Why do they do it to themselves? Why do they do it? Ten fucking minutes, everybody! Fucking time! When are we gonna fucking do? Just fucking see it out of five fucking minutes, honestly. Fuck shit, man! So, we haven't learned the fucking hard way. You come in and shout and ball, but you fucking created it yourselves. Because you go to one up and you don't organise yourselves. They're singing my mate's fucking name and counting him up and everything. Next minute they're fucking singing his fucking Barmy Army. Fuck, this is shower of shit to gun. Next minute we let them go straight back in and then they get away. They're singing fucking Paul Cook's fucking Barmy Army. That's, that's how fucking fickle fans can be. Let them off the fucking hook, boys. Again. Fucking Wrexhams. Oh, your fucking effort. 
So it's fucking heartbreaking for you. Not me, I don't, listen, I'm gonna go on. Fucking get on the coach, have a fucking bit to eat. I'm not aching and fucking like that. I used to be. You know what? I go, I'm fucking absolutely fucking gutted for you as individuals and as a group. We go again, we've got what, five games left? He doesn't need to earn a living at the moment because he earns a living off of TikTok. He's got about 4. Point, I think 3.8 million followers on TikTok or something. I don't know what he puts on there because they're videos, aren't they? God knows what he puts on there. But yeah, if you if you Google it, if you get it, it's, that's in there, isn't it? Andre, Alexis Andre, he, he's TikTok famous. So we don't, he pays himself basically. Got an influence, but, uh... Yeah, we try, we, I said to the chairman, he's, he might, if, because he's so famous TikTok, we might get a few more through the, through the, um, through the gate, come to watch him. So yeah, you're coming on the 20, it's going to be crazy, you know? What is it? So it's like a red carpet event for the launch of the um, TV, of the TV show. And then I actually saw the host. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the middle of the bus that right. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, there is three episodes who come in out first. Yeah. And um, I'm not on those three episodes. I'm coming after, you know. So you, do you do you replace somebody? No, no. I just come like as a bomb show. As a what? As a bomb show. So that's me, like the guy who is gonna get trouble with the girls, uh, basically. Okay. What's the dream club? I don't have a, I don't have a dream club. It's just to play in the highest level. Yeah. So Premier League. Yeah. So obviously that's. What I hope, you know. So yes. Yes, sir. Yo, how are you okay. Doing? Best barber in Kent. Thanks for that. It's got a gold uh, clipper. Yeah. You must be, must be good. Thank you. Shoot it, shoot it. People don't really know that football is my first thing, you know. They just think that. Even I post a video on TikTok about football on my last game. And people was like, oh my God, I thought that you were just a model influencer, but then you're actually very good at football because they don't really, like, I can show what I want on social media, you know? I don't have to show my football clips. So they don't really know who I am or what I do or what I really want to be, you know? In social media, you can't really see the real me, you know? You're always gonna have a judgment about my video and pictures because you don't really know me, you know? So, People might think that like I'm a player or like like I'm very like arrogant when it's just like I'm confident, you know. Hello. Merci. Yeah. Let's go. That's it. Really easy. And that's like maybe 500,000 views. Very easy. <laughs> so it's funny because some people, they are like, oh, uh, he's making TikTok. He don't have time for football. But I'm doing a video in 15 seconds. You see? There is no distraction. Some football players, they go out drinking, smoking. They're doing some madness. But nobody see it, but because I'm a public person mm -hmm. and my video is doing good. Yeah. So people are always have something to say, you know, about it. Yeah, thank Take you, sir. See you later. See you later. <laughs> okay, so we just finished the, the barber. And every week, you already know, that's a weekly thing. Because when you look good, you feel good. And when you feel good, you play good. And when you play good, they pay good. <laughs> Always remember this. Hello. Hello. Just get on. Can be. I can tell you that my equity investment over the years is 2.95 million. 
I've actually done many other things. For example, there's a new fiber sand pitch, new floodlights, a new family stand and changing rooms, new VIP dining room. There's been a lot of investment gone in. I hate to think what the total is. And if I, if I said it on camera, my wife would probably divorce me. So um, that's, uh, that's kind of where we are. You have to be quite resilient if you're going to be the wife of somebody like Jim and who's you know and the football club you have to be able to cope on your own a lot family with home affairs because it takes a lot of his time you have to be prepared to go to functions on your own go to weddings on your own because you're either doing it or you're not you can't play at it and he takes it really really seriously I'm quite good at being on my own so it's not a problem do you know because that's just how it is so yeah I'm never going to change him it's his love but we do manage to pull him away for certain things now. I am the one that sits there on his shoulder telling him, you know, don't get carried away and um, let's stop and think what that's going to cost. So it works all right. I think we need that. Yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just sort of know it, things go in circles, don't they? And what's important is the town of Dover have a club and we're both very sure that's what we both want, you know, because we're not going to be here forever. We also want a club that's in a healthy position and we both want Dover Athletic to succeed. We want the club to be the best possible club it can be with us here. Coming back to the football after lockdown and what's happened has probably made us stop and think quite a bit about what we want for the club. And I think both of us now say it's more about making it a really good experience for the people and not chasing silly dreams necessarily. That's not to say if we got promoted again it wouldn't be nice but realistically I think this next season is going to be good because I think it's a good place for us to be the league that we're going into. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. It's like a reset. It is definitely a reset yes. If this can't make me stronger, I don't think anything will. I've always been a fighter, so we, we've got to keep fighting. And uh, minus 12, budget cut, going back to part-time. But I've never been through a season where we've only won one game. Just never in my life, really, you know, as a player and certainly as a manager. People said to me, why you carry on doing it? It's not good for your reputation. Well, I disagree. I'm doing a job that I love doing under really difficult circumstances. Football people understand it. I love the game. I don't love the game when we're losing matches. I've had to come to terms with that really this year because of the situation. Yeah, I've taken this challenge on and we've got to rebuild this club again. I'm looking forward to the end. I'm looking forward to it now because let's try and get into the plus. That would be nice. If we can get four points, that would be brilliant. And then we've got to start thinking about rebuilding for next season. I've got nowhere to park. I am the manager of the team, by the way. Just because I'm driving the kit. Not enough hours in the day. Just make sure we compete. Good shit music. And there is the opening goal. You thought it was coming, and it's Bromley one, Dover nil. Deja vu, fellas. There's nothing in the game again, but we're one nil down from a set play. It's, it's the only thing that's, that's killed us. We have more belief, fellas. <coughs> we're so much better when we're on our front foot. When we sit off people, hey, we, we, we're in no man's up. I would go after them. Yeah, when we go after them, you did it. They, they kick the ball out. We're in it, aren't we? Are we in it? Yeah. Let's have some fire in your butt. I know it's difficult, but come on. Believe in it. Get out the back sides. I hate it when you don't go in there. It winds me up. Go on, go. Get out. Come on, come on, come on. 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 Towards the back post. College score! He's equalised again, Danny College, with his second goal of the game. He hasn't scored all season. He scored two now, and it's stoppage time. It's probably two, Dover two. Get in there! Get there on the plus! Two two, say. Get in the plus! Get in the plus! There it is! There's the plus! There it is! There it is! There it is! There's the plus! There it is! There's the plus. We was gonna get it. There it is. There it is. There's the plus. There's the plus. There we are. 
Get in there, get in there. There's the plus. Here it is. Well done, good news. Brilliant, son. Good boy. Well done. Brilliant. Here he is. Harry Lewandowski. You serve something out of the game. It's nice now. We can go in next Sunday. We've got into that plus. Something to shout about next, next Sunday. Well done. Well done. Good effort. Good effort. Well played, boys. Great character. We're done now, right? We'll take that off now. I'll probably go down, I'll be in the pub. I'm going to go and have a beer with a couple of lads. All good football people know what we've been through. Everywhere I go, people tell me how supportive they are, how unfair they think it is, and how disillusioned they are with the hierarchy of football. I mean, the biggest problem is there is no independent body to go to if you think you've been unfairly treated. The FA are judge, jury, executioner. All the appeal boards are appointed by the same people and paid by the same people, and it's just, uh, it's just an old boys club, frankly. We were set up to fail by the football authorities. It's hypocrisy and conflicts of interest all over the place. They did what they did to us for the good of the game and the game's integrity. Well, I can't understand how us being forced into our position and playing kids every Saturday is doing anything with the game's integrity. Equally, you look at the top six teams in the Premier Division, when it broke away, formed a, a, a new Super League, or tried to, it was only stopped because of fan power. What happened to them? Precisely nothing. We tried to save our club and did the right thing financially during a pandemic and we got hit with a 12-point deduction and a £40,000 fine. I don't see where the level playing field is. I don't see where the integrity is in that. Ref! Have a look at the fucking first one, you idiot! Oi! Have a look at the first one, you idiot! Hey, well done, baby. Fucking idiot. Fuck off. Is it right for coming? Yeah. These are the phrases in my brain. Come on, ref. Is that not foul, see? This is what Jonathan is saying to his referees. Absolutely. How's that not foul? Just bundled him over. Right, Jim. Okay, well, I apologise for me really because I should be getting sent off. That's, that's, I've let you down in that respect. So I'll apologise for that. Shouldn't be getting sent off, it's not right. But like I have and I'm going to face the consequences. But, you know, that's the last thing we need the manager getting sent off. I do get frustrated and I, you know, I've, I've let myself down and you down, so it won't happen again. It's another game, there's nothing in it. A referee's decision for the penalty, I think mean, that's harsh, but let's say we can't do a lot about that, he's made that decision. Start the game right, second half, have a bit of belief, tempo, you've got 45 minutes, that's all that's left. Let's go out there and have a, have a right go, don't let it pass you by. But come on, fucking right in it still, right in it. Put it on them now, put it on them, Lim. Come on. Come on. Come on. Is everyone all right?
uh, pretty much as, as much as it's been like that this season, really, that we perhaps don't get the rub of the green. But they're the sort of things that have gone against us quite a lot this season. But listen, it is what it is. It's been a tough season. Been a very tough season for everybody, not just you, you boys, everybody, the club itself. But what you can't do is let what's happened this season affect you as an individual. You know, as much as it's been a low, you know, there's also been positives come out of it. We've all been up here in football. I certainly have, and I've also had a, uh, been down here. You can't let that affect you. That's going to happen in your footballing lives. It will happen. We were down before we kicked the ball. So how hard's that for you boys? But you've got, to, you've got to put this to one side. You're young enough to go, right, actually. Remember that year we had at Dover? You know, before we kicked the ball, it was pretty much down. We had to motivate ourselves. Yeah, you remember that. But you put it to one side and you just got to go, right, OK, that's gone. Be positive, because I'm sure you will be. Like I said, I want you all to go into the bar afterwards. Don't have to stay long. Have a beer, because you deserve it. Be as positive as you can going forward. It's all you can do. All right, well done, boys. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Just a um, couple of announcements. First of all, just from uh, myself on the board and the team and the management, just want to say 100% thank you very much for your support this year, which has been a real tough year. And I promise you next year is going to be exciting, interesting and really competitive. So if you haven't got your season tickets yet, you know where to go to get them, yeah? <laughs> As you know, it's been tough around the club to, to get commercial support and to get community support. And we've worked very hard over the years and had some successes and some failures. What I'm delighted to announce today is that I have this week agreed a three-year main sponsor deal with a local company, an international company based in Dover, and that's the Mega Group. Yeah. You'll hear a lot more about that over the coming weeks, but it involves commercial support for the football club on a, on a three-year agreement. So our key aims in the years going forward are to get more involved in the community and to nurture and develop young players. And that's going to be, apart from winning football matches, what we're going to base our ethos around. So we look forward to seeing you. And as I say, you'll hear more uh, about it in the coming weeks. Thanks very much. So tell me when... Uh when you shook hands on that, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, yeah, because I know you were buzzing to tell me, <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, personally, that must have been huge, a huge weight off your shoulders. It was massive weight. I mean, to have a major company like Mega uh, come in and partnering with us is it's a dream come true. Really, the last time that happened was in the nineties. Uh, when um, I think it was Daihatsu who had the head office in uh, Dover. Since then, we've not managed to get a really big sponsorship deal with a major sponsor. I'm not going to ask you how much that is. I, well, I can't tell you anyway. It's, uh, it's subject to an NDA. All oh, right, bloody yeah. hell. It must be mega. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's just a mega deal. It's just a mega just deal. A mega deal. It's just a mega deal, yeah. yeah. And it's what a great name to have on your shirt, Mega. Yeah. Well, sure to be a song about that somewhere along the line. But you're going to keep going now, Jim. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, uh, I'm uh, in it for the long term, as they say. Right. What else would I do? I'm retired now. I've got to keep my brain active somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Hello.